How's it going everybody? Cub fan here in Snapshot 13W18C hanging out here with my new uh, pet ocelot which I'm holding onto with the new uh, lead tool but uh, I just wanted to make a snapshot video here because I haven't done one in a few weeks and as such I'm going to make one big snapshot video for uh, all the pre-releases for 1.6 that have come out so far so this video will cover uh, snapshots from week 16, 17, and 18. So the first change to note is the new uh, launcher for Minecraft. Uh, I'll provide a download link in the description so you can download the launcher for yourself. And basically what the launcher does is it allows you to easily switch back and forth between different versions of Minecraft. Uh, so right now you can only switch between 1.5.1 1.5.2 and the snapshots but there are plans in the future to add older versions uh, so that will be very cool and with the new launcher there were files added to the game that allow the creation of sound packs and language packs so these will be made much in the same way as texture packs are now so that is definitely something to look forward to and we'll go ahead and switch to a different world for the rest of the changes Okay, so the next change is a new block, and that new block that we have is the hay block. So you can place hay blocks down in any orientation, uh, but you cannot uncraft them. So if I put it in my inventory, you can't uncraft the hay back into wheat. Uh, but it's a nice decorative block and a nice addition. The biggest change in the most recent snapshot is the addition of a new mob, horses. And I'll show you what a horse looks like here in just one second. I'll go ahead and spawn one in right now, but there are multiple variations which I'll show you. So here's the horse model here. And you can ride horses by right clicking them. But when I do, you'll see I get kicked off. So you have to tame the horses first to be able to ride them, otherwise they just buck up and knock you off like that. So to tame the horses, you can use either apples or wheat. So let's go ahead and tame this guy here. Give him a few apples. Perfect. Let's try and ride him now. See what we got. And you'll see the horse's health uh, will come up in right next to your health, basically. Um, Alright, so I think I got this guy tamed now. And you left shift click to dismount the horse. And once you've mounted him, and you've tamed him, you can get out a saddle, and also uh, horse armor. The horse armor currently is not available uh, to craft, and it will not be available to craft. It will only be found in dungeon chests, so that's something to take note of. Uh, so we'll go ahead and right click and put a saddle on him, and that's what the saddle texture looks like, kind of kind of a neat neat texture and you also get this uh, part on the front of him here and we'll go ahead and put some we'll go ahead and put some gold horse armor on him yeah it looks pretty cool then we can get on him mount him and then you use the directional arrow keys to control where he goes and wow this guy is pretty quick alright yeah and you can also uh, cause him to jump just by holding down the space bar and you'll see the the bar there at the bottom of the screen uh, fills up and the farther over you have the bar the higher he will jump so you can go over here and jump over like a fence for example come back around and jump over that fence uh, so it's pretty pretty nice uh, so that's the horse and let me show you some of the other horse uh, horses you can have so we'll spawn in there's a gray one there's a spotted one, lighter brown one, a uh, slightly darker horse, and these are all different uh, textures of the same mob. And it's not clear if Mojang is going to add this type of variation into other mobs, but it is now in the game, so that's kind of interesting to uh, speculate on. So yeah, quite a number of different horses. Uh, you can also get small horses. Let's try and get a small one here. Come on now. Oh, there's a, uh, a mule. There's a small one. And if you get a small baby horse, you can uh, 
You can grow it by feeding it wheat, and you'll see it'll incrementally grow until it's fully grown like so. And then you can uh, tame it like normal. So we'll tame this guy. Get on him. I think he's tamed now. Yep. And you can see that this horse has a different number of hearts than this horse here. So if I go back and forth between them, you'll see they have different uh, different health levels. And that's uh, it's part of the individual variation I was talking about. And they, they all have different speeds and different maximum jump heights. So I've heard that breeding them, if you breed horses, uh, just by using uh, just by using wheat, you can get faster horses. But I'm not sure if that's true or not, or if that's just a, just a myth. The other cool thing about uh, horses and other mobs is that we now have something called a lead. And the lead is crafted like that. And uh, so you need string and a slime ball will give you two leads. And you can use the leads to tie up your horses. So how you do that is you right click with the lead uh, on the animal or the uh, another mob like a cow or a pig or a chicken. And then you can lead them around with this. Or you can uh, click on a fence and it will tie the horse to the fence so he will no longer be able to leave. All right, and if you want to untie your horse, you just punch the lead, get the lead back, and then you can get on your horse and go off. And if you tame a donkey, you can uh, not only put a saddle on him, but you can also put a chest on the side there. And presumably in the future, you'll be able to access this inventory, so you'll have like pack mules that can carry stuff around. Um, so that'll be very interesting. Okay, and then say if you wanted to breed some donkeys or horses, you get on your horse, click them with some wheat, dismount, uh, get on another one, click it with wheat, get off, and they should make a little uh, little mule there. There we go. Yep, and one other really cool feature of horses is that they can go up ladders. So you can take your horse up a ladder and off the other side like that. And if you have an injured horse, uh, you can also use wheat to heal them. So you should see that happening right here. I believe. Maybe. There we go. Yep. So you can heal your horses with wheat. And then just to show you here, this is the diamond horse armor right there. And that is the iron horse armor. So some pretty, pretty nice variation in terms of the types of horses and also uh, the armors. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Okay everybody, the next change is carpets. So we now have multicolored carpets uh, of every wool color and you can craft these just by placing two wool on the crafting table like so. And some interesting properties of carpets, aside from their obvious aesthetic value, is that you can still activate redstone ore when you walk across uh, we walk across it while on carpet. You can also place it on a beacon by shift clicking and it will not interrupt the beacon so you can put beacons in floors now which is kinda cool. You can also place it on translucent blocks like uh, glass and glowstone. So that's carpet. Okay the next change has to do with cauldrons and end portal frames. So now if you attach a comparator to either a cauldron or an end portal frame uh, they will output a redstone signal if they're in various states. So a full cauldron, for instance, will output a redstone signal of 3. If you take one bottle's worth of water out, it will output a signal strength of 2. Another bottle, 1. And an empty cauldron will not output a redstone signal. And since cauldrons fill up slowly during rain, this means we can now make a uh, survival rain detector just by having an array of cauldrons and hooking up comparators to them. So that's pretty cool. And also a good change for map makers, and there might be some applications in survival, but I couldn't really think of any. Uh, if you place a eye of ender in an end portal frame, it'll output a redstone signal strength of 15. So that'll be very good for adventure map makers. All right, the next change has to do with the respiration enchantment on helmets. 
So let me just show you exactly what happens here, and we are full of squids here. Uh, but you can see now, we can see sort of across the the way here. Uh, we can see the squids fairly well, but not uh, totally crystally clear. Uh, but if we come up here, put on our respiration helmet, you can now see that we can uh, see underwater much better than we could before. And the squids are much more well defined, and there's not that sort of haze that comes with underwater viewing that we have without the helmet on. So without, with... Uh, so the respiration enchantment has changed to help you see underwater. Next up we have the long-awaited coal block. And the coal block is crafted with nine coal in the crafting table like that. There we go, I'll show you what it looks like. It uh, looks like that. Nice texture there. And the coal block can smelt uh, 72 items, which is the same as nine blocks or nine uh, pieces of coal. Uh, the only thing you cannot do with it is put it in a furnace minecart. So if we try and put it in there, it doesn't really work. Uh, you still have to use coal for the furnace minecarts here. Yeah, just like that. Another change in these snapshots are the ability to name mobs. So if we get some name tags here and we'll get some zombie eggs here. Uh, so you can use the name tag in an anvil to name a mob so we'll name let's name a zombie undead steve cost five levels to get the name tag and i should note that the name tags are only available in dungeon chests so horse armor and name tags both only available in dungeon chests but we'll name the zombie here just by right clicking on him and when we look at him his name appears above him so undead steve welcome to the game also new this week, we now have the ability to smelt up full blocks of clay. And if we go ahead and do that and smelt up the clay blocks, eventually we will end up with a new block called hardened clay. And these hardened clay blocks have sort of a uh, adobe texture to them. Uh, so it's easy to imagine these as sort of uh, coming up in a lot of deserts and desert villages. But yeah pretty good change there. There's also been one small change to the creative mode and that is that the tooltip now shows the category that a block is in. So for example chiseled sandstone is considered a building block whereas this piston is considered part of the redstone group. Also new this week there has been some changes to deserts so you'll see that there are now no small water lakes in deserts however there are still lava pools that will will be seen. Um, so deserts have been made a little bit more desert-like in that sense. Also new this week, zombies will now spawn other zombies around them if they take damage and it's dark in the surrounding area. So let me just show you that here. Uh, see there's only one zombie around me right now. And we're actually right next to a desert temple, which is kind of cool. So let's see if I can get him to spawn in. Whoop. Friend here somewhere. Yep, there we go. So that zombie spawned because I was damaging this zombie. Uh, so that's going to be a challenge for all of you who have zombie spawners to overcome. Also, new in this week's snapshot, you can now find chests in the corner of the interior hallways of another fortress. Alright guys, so that's all the changes I could find in the last three weeks of snapshots. As always, thank you very much for watching, and there will be links and a change log in the description. Thanks for watching everybody, this has been Cup Fan. Goodbye.